Hello students, in the last session we have learned about the types of reproduction and the structure of flower. From chapter number 1, a reproduction in lower and higher plants. In this session, we are going to learn about three different topics. The first one is structure of anther. The second one is structure of pollen grain. And the third one is development of male gametophyte. You know that androsium is one of the essential whorl of the flower. Androsium is the male reproductive whorl of the flower. The members of androsium are called as stamen. Now, in the given figure, we see the entire stamen. Each stamen is differentiated into three parts. The upper enlarged part of the stamen is called as anther. The stalk of the anther is called as filament. The anther and stamen are connected with the help of connective. Now we will see the structure of anther. Anther is of two types. First one is monothicus and second one is diathicus. Each monothicus anther contains two pollen sacs. For example, we see monothicus anther in hibiscus. In monothicus anther, only one anther lobe is present. Hence, it is called as monothicus anther. And in one anther lobe, only two pollen sacs are present. These pollen sacs are also called as microsporangia in diathecus anther it contains four pollen sacs so it is called tetrasporaginate now in the below figure we see a diathecus anther diathecus anther means diathecus anther shows two anther lobes hence it is called as diathecus anther when we take a horizontal section or it is also called as transverse section of the anther. Inside the anther, we see total four pollen sacs. These are arranged inside the anther. One, two, three and four. As four pollen sacs are present, the anther is called as tetrasporaginate anther. In the given a diagram a line of dehiscence is shown now the line of dehiscence is nothing but it causes the dehiscence or breaking of anther after the maturity of pollen grains and pollen grains are released in the atmosphere by breaking the anther through the line of dehiscence after the release of pollen grains these pollen grains are transported to different flowers by transporting agents. These transporting agents are also called as pollinating agent and the process of transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the flower is called as pollination. Now we will study the types of anthers in detail. Anther is of two types. First one is monothicus anther, and second one is diathicus anther. Monothicus anther contains one anther lobe, or it is also called as one theca. Similarly, in one anther lobe, two pollen sacs are present. These pollen sacs are also called as microsporangia. The common example of Monothicus anther is hibiscus. Now, second type of anther that is diathicus anther contains two anther lobes, or these are also called as theca. Then, two anther lobes contain four pollen sacs. Pollen sacs are also called as microsporangia. And the common example of diathicus anther is gulmor, or it is found in most of the angiospermic flowers.
young anther is made up of parenchymatous tissue parenchymatous tissue is one of the type of simple tissue and it is surrounded by epidermis the inner side of the epidermis is called as hypodermis some cells of hypodermis develop into archesporial cells the archesporial cells divide into inner sporogenous cell and outer parietal and outer parietal cells the sporogenous cells form sporogenous tissue which later on develop into pollen grain then the parietal cell divides to form wall of anther wall of anther is made up of four layers that is epidermis endothelium middle layer and tapetum here is the here is the transfer section of anther inside the transfer section we see the distinct layers of wall of anther wall of anther consists of outermost layer called as epidermis epidermis is made up of flattened cells means they are flat on outer and inner side epidermis is a single layer then inner to the epidermis the second layer is called as endothelium endothelium consists of cells which are radially elongated as well as endothelium shows presence of fibrous thickenings these fibrous thickenings help in the process of dehiscence or breaking of anther then the layer next to endothelium is called middle layer middle layer is made up of one or two layers of thin walled cells that means the cells show thin walls and it is generally one or two layer in thickness the innermost layer of wall of anther is called as tapetum tapetum encloses sporogenous tissue which later on develops into pollen grains tapetum is also called as a nutritive layer as it provides food material or nutrients to the developing pollen grain and at the center of this ts of anther we see a connective inside the connective vascular tissues are present vascular tissues like xylem and phloem are present you know the function of xylem xylem provides water while phloem provides food material to the anther for its different activities on maturity on maturity the anther breaks or the wall of anther breaks and this process is called as dehiscence the breaking of anther occurs at a particular place which is somewhat curved or it is called as groove the pollen grains on maturity come out of the anther by breaking the anther wall this breaking of anther wall is called as dehiscence the layers like epidermis endothelium and inner layers play an important role in breaking of wall of anther and these pollen grains are set free later on these pollen grains are transported to the surface of stigma by different agents and this process is called as pollination now we will see the process of microsporogenesis in which pollen grains are produced so microsporogenesis is a process in which each microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to produce tetrad of haploid microspores now tetrad means total four pollen grains are produced these microspores are also called as pollen grains now we will see the process of microsporogenesis in short inside the pollen sac sporogenous cells are produced these sporogenous cells develop into sporogenous tissue sporogenous tissue is also called microspore mother cell 
and these microspore mother cells are diploid in condition they undergo the process of meiosis meiosis means it is a reduction division in which from single microspore mother cell total four haploid microspores or pollen grains are produced these pollen grains when they are young in condition are present in a group this group is called as pollen tetrad on maturity these pollen grains separate now we will see the structure of a mature pollen grain or it is also called as microspore each pollen grain is unicellular means it is single cell then it is uninucleate means it show presence of only one nucleus and is non motile non motile means it cannot move on its own then pollen grain is generally spherical in shape pollen grain is surrounded by two layered wall called as sporoderm sporoderm consist of outer thick wall called as exine and this exine is consisting of a non biodegradable substance called as sporopollenin non biodegradable substance means it does not go under it does not undergo decomposition then this exine is also resistant to different chemical substance so its main function is protection it protects the pollen grain from chemical as well as biological decomposition exine may be smooth or it is rough in some plant at some region exine is thin and leaves small openings these openings are called as germ pores through the germ pore pollen tube comes out during the pollen germination the inner layer is called as intine intine is thin and delicate and it is made up of pectin and cellulose so we have studied the structure of mature pollen grain and from this mature pollen grain the male gametophyte of flower develops so we will study the development of male gametophyte now we will study the development of male gametophyte in detail the male gametophyte develops from a mature pollen grain the diagram shows different stages in the development of male gametophyte in the a figure we see mature pollen grain we have already studied the detailed structure of pollen grain in pollen grain nucleus is present at the center then nucleus is surrounded by cytoplasm pollen grain shows a two layered wall called as sporoderm this sporoderm is differentiated into outer exine and inner intine the exine leaves small opening called as germ pore so male gametophyte develops from a mature pollen grain the mature pollen grain will undergo mitosis and it will produce two unequal cell the large cell is called as vegetative cell or it is also called as tube cell and small cell is called as generative cell vegetative cell is generally large then it is naked it contains food material or nutrients for the development of male gametophyte the nucleus of vegetative cell is irregular in shape while the generative cell is small and it show thin cell wall then it shows nucleus and cytoplasm is dense or it is also called as thick cytoplasm in the c figure we see that the generative cell floats inside the cytoplasm and then in d figure we see that the generative cell has begun 
for division that is mitosis occurs in generative cell in the next diagram that is e diagram we see that the generative cell has undergone cell division that is mitosis and this generative cell produces two non motile male gametes the male gametes are called as non motile as they cannot move on their own similarly the male gametes are haploid then the development of or the production of these male gamete either occurs inside the pollen grain or either it occurs inside the pollen tube in the last figure that is a figure we see that the vegetative cell along with cytoplasm tube nucleus and two non motile male gamete comes out through the germ pore to produce a tube it is called as pollen tube so a mature male gametophyte in angiosperm consists of a pollen grain then its cytoplasm two non motile male gametes tube nucleus and pollen tube is called as the male gametophyte of angiosperm S similarly the pollen grains are generally released at two or three cell stage through the anther and then they are transferred to the surface of the stigma by the process of pollination so in this session we have learned regarding the structure of anther the structure of pollen grain and development of male gametophyte the remaining part we will learn in our next session till then bye